Yes, this is real. We could do financing on this, this much cash, this much debt. Then you get into the reality of design build, uh, going after uh, RQs for uh, architect and engineers to get the projects locked down because you have to do all of that before you ever jump into the financing agreement. That has to be completed. And that's six to nine month process, depending on what avenue you choose. Nan and I were saying, I asked her, she said, probably six if you really pushed it. If you're lucky because of anyway. But it depends on the model. And if you've already got something that's already designed, you can speed it up. I've got a question. I, I know we talked about Spring Creek Elementary the whole time, and then you just threw in Spring Creek Middle. And right. when I saw Spring Creek, it says new Spring Creek slash grant the middle, $35 million. And I'm, I'm just looking at the prioritized facilities plan, phase one, that was approved. July of 07. So when you say use Spring Creek, now we're talking about Spring Creek Elementary, I understand all that, but when you threw in Spring Creek Middle, that, that threw me off a little bit. And, and I guess the reason it throws me off because it goes back to trends and patterns like Dr. McFadden was speaking of and then looking at what Mr. Mayo or Commissioner Mayo was speaking of and then going right back to Mr. Edward Marty about a long range plan and funding and getting uh, Dashboard Associates to give us options on funding all of this. And, and these options could be, I know out of the gate it was, you know, a bond was never passed. But, you know, I, I disagree with that. And I strongly disagree with that because we don't know. The, 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 the numbers haven't been put together yet. Well, so there's, the, wait a minute, let me change. And, and then, because I'm directing this to the whole board, not just to you. So, so you know, the, the bond, if if you put a bond out there, you look at the big picture, you look at all the needs of the county. And we were talking about moving timetables up from 15 years to 10 or maybe seven years. And what you have is a plan that was in 07 that's moved up to 12 or 13, but that's the plan for the next three to five years and not burning another board with it. So how much can we get is an option. How do you obtain that money? if there's a bond and understanding bonds and understanding just straight out borrowing and that's what Davenport does is they, they look at the interest rates of what you can borrow at a straight out mortgage construction rate who's, who's collateralized what and then you look at bonds that is certainly going to have an effect on the tax rate but if everybody in the county which this is including everybody in the county we're not just including Grantham or just not Spring Creek or we're just not focusing on one school for Charles Vieira we're focusing on the whole county and I commend the Board of Education for looking at the whole county and, and <clears throat> here is much more to it than just these four items now these four items came to the board this board that's going to be sitting for four years it came to us but there's a greater need possibly. And we're just asking that if the Board of Education sees a greater need and, and they're looking at these trends, then there's other parts of this plan that may not have been completed yet. Let's get it on the radar. Let's look at it and let's have that important to give us those options, what it's going to cost. But I agree with Mr. Bale. Let the Board of Education bring everything to us, look at the big picture and say, this is what we want. This is our picture for five years. But, you know. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm confused. <laughs> because I recall sending to the county commissioners an exhausted list of what we felt were priorities on the school board agenda. Right. And I also recall receiving, and I'm not going to say it, Mr. Honor. I'm just confused. I also remember being directed by the commission to narrow the list. Now I'm hearing you say, go back and tell us what we want. We did that. We sent you an exhausted list. I appreciate and then we, well, you may appreciate, but what I don't appreciate, if I can say this, Madam Facilitator, is that when I read in the paper that we were slack, derelict, and negligent when we met every deadline that hurt me and it took everything in my power not to respond being the new kid on the block and put a muzzle on me <laughs> but I, that hurt me because we had just had a meeting talked about talking about 
brotherly love, working together. And then I read in the paper, okay, first time I thought it was a Freudian slip. But when I read again that we were slack, that hurt me. Because I know we, we need you for certain things. I, I said in our first meeting that you are the big brothers. And I wanted to set that relationship that we need you as the county. But we had a specific focus with the school system. And, and you're telling us to go back now and give you a list of what we think is important added to whatever that is. When I mean, we've done that. But yet we were called slack, and I would rip, and, and I would get rid of my little bitty novice attitude if you could tell me where we have been derelict in our duties, and that hurt me. And I never heard an apology. I never heard anything. And I want to go to the paper and ask you to define what slack means. Well, the reason I'm asking this or making this comment is that if Davenport is going to bring us figures. Let's look outside the box and have Davenport while we are paying them to give us these options. If in fact you want to relook at something, you can. It's not up to me, that's up to you. But Davenport is hired by the county to structure any way that we see needs to pay for anything. If it's going to be short term or long term. We have to have that that profile before us as we set tax rates. We have the tax rate now set down at a lowest rate, in fact, the highest percentage change of any county in the state this past year, to indicate to the people that we've got the rate, now let's look at the options of what you need as far as education. So if you want to think outside, I was just suggesting, I'm just throwing it out, thinking aloud is what I was doing. So if you want to look at something, give Mr. Smith and the team, your team and, and the county team, give it the, the opportunity to say, Davenport, these are options. What if we want 30 million? What if we want 60 million? What if we want 100 million? So the commissioners will know for the next three and a half years how to go about structuring the tax rate if, in fact, a bond is the issue or if we just borrow money. Okay. So I'll finish up though because you you, you brought something up. Yeah, I, I, I used the word slack. I used the word slack. I apologize. Yes, you did. did twice. Okay, but the derelict part and the incompetence part I never said. There's no, no, that's what slack means. But, okay, I but, but I'm sorry. Slack. Okay, but but I don't want to go into that because this is not argument. But you made it, and the public is questioning us. What have you all done to upset the commissioners? Why is it they're not listening to you? We come, I come into this meeting and never receive a report as to whether you accepted what we proposed or not. Well, you can look at over your in space if you want to. What I'm telling you is I never received anything. And I thought coming to this meeting was really out of order. Because I would love to have heard from the commissioners, and I'm learning now just today, that you haven't made a decision. I'm thinking your mind is made up. as to what, And I couldn't understand the, the, the reason for this retreat. And I only asked the chairman to, to deal with what you put out in public to say to our constituency that the Board of Education is slack. And you can talk about Davenport until Davenport come in and give a report. But what I don't understand is, what have we done wrong? Dr. Taylor has followed every guideline. We, our, our chairman has followed every guideline. The, the Board of Education, we have taken every issue seriously. But would you please explain to me, Mr. Chairman, where have we been slack? And if slack don't mean derelict and negligent, please let me know what slack means. Okay, I'm going to let you respond, but I'm also going to just, for your own information, we're going to do an evaluation at the end of this meeting. Part of what we're going to talk about is what y'all want to do differently in the same going forward. And I want to suggest that one of those things is be very careful about the words that you use. Thank you. Because clearly people are attaching a lot of meaning that perhaps wasn't intended to be attached to some of these phrases. Mayor Pastor, you know about the gifts. <laughs> well, I forget, I love my colleagues. Don't, don't go by this, look. I don't want us to win. Okay, okay. Uh, before I want to get to you two. Okay. okay. Mayor, please. Next. Mayor. Mayor. Okay. Okay, Mayor, pretty please. Okay. <laughs> if we don't make some kind of decision today, all of this book should be in vain. We will have spent a whole day hashing out things that we have been doing for, not for years, but months. If no more, 
than to please take our plan. Please take our plans permission. We submitted to you what we thought we needed at the time. If we need to come back later and maybe consider other projects in the future, fine. But we gave you our hard work and we wish you would take that and go back and meet on it and let us know about the funding. That's the best we can do. Otherwise, this day has been wasted so far as I'm concerned. It's my understanding that that is what the plan is. I hope. I just part of what Mr. Cannon said it was uh, we had to, since I, I've been on board on anybody here, so I've seen a lot of iterations of the same process. We've uh, we have been asked not by this board, but in the past, I were told board the commission <clears throat> to present a plan, a five-year plan, and then a ten-year plan, and then we get back to well, this is ridiculous. Well, you really so if you right. come back to a smaller plan, well, let's break it back up into a larger plan. And but the whole thing is sort of a moot point anyway because this the Board of Commissioners can't commit a future board any more than we can commit a future board. Right now we know where we want to be. We know that basically on the discussion we just had as far as financing and funds available and being wary of incurring the debt. Um, we're not going to be able to handle anything more than we got right now on the board for the next four years. And you're not going to be able to commit anybody after that even if you could. So let's go ahead with the with what we got on the table and get it rolling. Back to my request that at least the plan have all of that in there. There's a reason for that in my mind, and that is several points. First point is, if you're going to have improvements to Spring Creek Elementary to expand the classrooms by removing mobile units, you still are not going to, am I correct, Arnold, you're still not going to resolve the issue of all the mobile units there, and you're not going to resolve those until you build a new middle school. So they are interconnected. The next issue, I want to remind everyone here that if there ever is a need for a middle school, it's at Spring Creek. You are mixing some, some highly charged young folks together in a school of a middle school and a high school. Now talk about separation, I don't, I'm not in the school business, but in the people business, I would say that has got to have some priority of separating those students. And if we are going to take a time of borrowing funds while interest rates are down, construction costs are down, I say why not go ahead and resolve the majority of those issues in this county at one time. And that's why I want to at least look at that plan. I didn't say vote on that plan. I didn't say that that is the plan. I said at least I want to see that option. Thank you. I can't say it any better, because that's exactly what I was going to say. I've had long conversations with all about Spring Creek and the uh, potential problems of mixing younger teenagers with older teenagers and that's the cause. So I think it's going to need to be in the equation. I would hope that you could look at it and consider that. Finally, I would say I would seldom agree with my colleague John Bell, but today I do. <laughs> <laughs> I know what the issues are. Put the financial people together, bring us some options, and we'll vote on what we get past this. Thank you. And I'd like to ask Dr. Cannon, Dr. Cannon, as I see you shaking your head, you saw the agree with Joe over here. I mean, about. Concept that he just yes, that's in our big plan. When we asked to narrow it down, we came to Grant. Yeah, unofficially, so, it sounded like we've made some progress because being able to sit and see each other, it's obvious that we agree on these kinds of things we're talking about. And just let the financial people get together and do what they do, come back to us, as Mr. Bell said, and we're down the road. I might as well put my two cents worth. <laughs> <laughs> while, while we're adding, I want to, visit, I want to add Northwest because we got mobile home classrooms up there. We need, if we're going to look at the total funding, go ahead and include them because 
There's not no west the only one left that has 15 mobile home classroom or there any other schools other than Spring Creek that has that many mobile home classrooms. I'm asking the question. I know, but we're going to take care of that. Okay. But we Okay. I won't, I make, hey, I'd like to see us add no know west. Add some classrooms there. Future funding. If that's what we're going to do, let's go ahead and take care of the whole thing at one time. And Mr. Mayor, if you're looking off plan, I would like to interject my three cents. Please remember Southern Wayne. Okay? I mean, we can go right down to the 31 schools. Everybody has a wish list, That's but it's not Christmas. That is correct. But my, my issue is, is that there's a safety issue safety and, and, there's a, and there's a weather issue That's with right. kids being in the weather. That's my issue. Yes, sir. If we don't have that issue at any other school, Mobile home classrooms has to be a priority somewhere in the system. Okay? Yes, I'm going to throw something out there, and I'm speaking mostly to the Board of Education. If we build Grantham Elementary, and we have some capacity at Grantham Elementary, Grantham joins Rosewood Elementary, and Rosewood Elementary joins Northeast Elementary. Okay? If we pull up Northwest, I'm sorry. Uh, if we pull, I'll just pull a number out. If we pull 100 students out of Rosewood and send them to Grantham, then we could pull 100 students out of Northwest and send them to Rosewood. We could, we could look, that's four classrooms, okay? Um, if we bring, if we build Spring Creek Middle, we would free up some space at Spring Creek High School, all right? If we have some space at Spring Creek High School, it joins Eastern Wayne High School, which joins CBA High. Okay, we could do the same thing by tweaking the district line. Not a lot of people, it's controversial, we don't make some people mad, but, but uh, you would give us the ability to have a little bit more flexibility in those, moving those district lines up, huh? and could give you some more space at Northwest and some more space at CBO. I commend you for bringing up the elephant in the room. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that plan would work. Uh, I, think that would, I think that plan would work for a couple of reasons. One reason is distance, and the other reason is that river, the Ferry Bridge Road, is the only road across the river there. And every several times every year, it floods where you can't get through there, so you wouldn't be able to bring the buses to there. Yeah, you couldn't. Mike, this sure, sure. Sure. Some sure. Way, but you couldn't do. Couldn't do really <laughs> <really bad. laughs> Well, just just a comment. You know, I can't see it here when you bring up Rosewood Middle and make any comments about not or should being able to move lines. But here again, that's strictly the Board of Education's call. And as a commissioner serving that district, I'm not going to go there until the Board of Education instructs me that I should talk about it. Okay. Well, you know, we do all the things we're talking about doing. I just want everybody to know since we're on camera that the guy that's talking about raising taxes is Ray Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> well, no matter where you are, no matter what community you're in, these decisions are hard and it's, it's really difficult to figure out whether to inch along or go for the whole enchilada. And inevitably, staff get directed to if you're bringing us the information for inch along, no, it's, it's not big enough to think bigger, think outside the box. And they do think outside the box, and then they're told, you thought too big. This is uncomfortable. We can't do it. So uh, I want to encourage you to have compassion, particularly for the staff who are bringing you this information, because there is no right answer. You've got a lot of valid and equally compelling values coming head to head on this, particularly when it comes to taxes versus education. It's hard to make those choices, absolutely. Difficult no matter where you are. Now before we get too far down the rabbit hole in any other direction related to the specifics of any particular campus, are there any other next steps we need to get figured out? We've got a target date of somewhere around October 1st, staff bringing this information back. Marla, tell us how do the two boards want to bring the information back? Do you want, you know, we can have draft data or we said we were part of the way there, is this looking like the right direction, or do you want a kind of a final update that gets brought to both boards at the same time? So it's just sometimes that's just really important. But yes. boards, you're two separate yes. elected boards, and I'm sure Dr. Taylor will feel like I do. We want to do what's right for both of our boards. And I know this is the county side, but obviously we're joined at the hip on this issue. So just your thoughts on that. I'm sure I'm, I want to see Dr. Taylor, so I'm sure he has the same question. You all massage this. 
in your committees as much as you want to. But when we hear it, I want all of us to hear it at the same time. So I, do not want any share I don't want any misunderstanding, okay. right. a misinformation. That's right. No, sir. Same time. Yeah, it would be nice if so if we could get the information from before we had the meeting so we could look at it and talk to about it. She'd like it at least a week or two in advance of a meeting. Uh, a week, a week in advance, at least a week in advance. Now, now let me also ask a question. In this joint meeting where this is going to be presented, is that decision time on that day or not? No. 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 We're just making presentations. No decisions on that time. So that everybody's expectations will be in line. I would be no you decisions. Probably do some, you may want to look at some tweaking at that point. You may send Davenport back to get some other ideas. Uh, we may have, by our kit, we may need, because there are lots of options out there as far as how you deal, design, build. We may come back and say, you know, guys, if you were to do it, shift it this way, we can save a million bucks, we can do this other project. So, and I think it would go back to the like boards at that point in time, and that would put you in that November, October, November time frame. I would, I would like to include in, in the step process here clarity with the Board of Commissioners and the, the Board of Education that we have some money. And I would like to encourage our board to go ahead and start spending our money. In other words, we can debate this for a long time, but them kids at Dillard in August, when they go back to school, it's going to be hot in that gym. Okay? We got the money to put the air conditioning in the gym. Why don't we go ahead and do it, the Board of Education? But what I'm trying to say is the Board of Commissioners, you know, we keep talking about it. I would like some clarity that, that the Board of Education, I can encourage my board to let's go ahead and do what we can do. I, if I can, the only thing I would say based on the meeting we had with Davenport yesterday, and, and of course, they're absolutely a priority. I know the county, we're kind of in the, Mr. May, the same box because we've got some things that we absolutely want to do for the county. Some things we've held off for a couple of years, we know, because of, of dollars and the economy. But uh, when you look at using those dollars, I would go back, Mr. Flowers, to when Davenport put the plan together, Ms. Holt and I have talked about this multiple times with Davenport. <coughs> when you look at it, um, it includes the use of those sales tax dollars. The only thing I would say, I'm absolutely not saying I'm discouraging you from spending any of that money. I would just say be cautious when you do it. Look at what it means for big picture. Are those fixes permanent fixes? If they are, you may want to look at them. But at least give us opportunity in the next 60 days to come back and find out how we can leverage your dollars, our dollars, to the max. I agree. So I'm just cautioning. That's all. So I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying just yell at light. That's all I'm saying. Makes sense to me. Is this Thinking about the children. Yes. And you're thinking right now about building down the road. We're thinking about children yes. who are passing out. Yes. Trying to take PE, trying to play ball in these gymnasiums. That's right. And I say Carver Heights. You have to put every fan you can find in that gym when those kids are in there for graduation. We don't want a child dying in there. These are present needs. We can't wait two or three years for that. We cannot do it. We've waited long enough, but they need now out. The, the heat. And that's a it's harder sure. than it was when I was a child. Yeah. You don't know about when I was a child. We didn't have that when I was a child. But it's much harder than global warming or whatever you want to call it. But it's harder now. 100 degrees is nothing. Sure. And, uh, That's why I said you guys have got to decide with hard. I mean, you guys yeah, have to decide with hard. Plenty of difficult decisions to go around. Are there any other next steps we need to clarify right now? Yes, sir. Well, I'd, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to make a comment. Um, I would like to see better communication with our board and with the board of education. I would like to see better communication through this process than what we've had in the past. When we met before. Uh, as new boards coming on this year, we felt like uh, the Board of Education felt like we had a good meeting. One of the things that we wanted to discuss with the county commissioners at that time was the Senate Bill 236 that was coming up. Uh, the, uh, the, across the state with uh, school boards, uh, their authority on facilities and that type of thing being taken over by county commissioners. Um, 
and we asked to discuss that, and it was tabled to a later time. And we removed it from that agenda. The next thing that we find out is that Wayne County has been put on that list before the Senate hearing. He said it's going to take place the next day. And our school board members began to call our senator and ask to be removed. And we, I know who put us on the list and why it was put on the list. But, um, you know, it gives us the feeling that um, when you guys make a move like that and you put us on that list to take our facilities away from us and the control that we have with facilities, then um, it gives us the feeling that, what you know, why, that's why contention came into this room today. And I know some of you county commissioners are looking at each other. Because y'all didn't discuss it, but it ended up on the list in Rock. And um, we did get it removed. John and I went to Raleigh to speak on the issue. And, um, and we managed to get taken off of it. But when things like that are going on behind our back and you've not communicated with us about things such as that, and um, there's no sense in us coming to a table here when we've got those kind of things going on in the background behind us meeting. And that needs to stop. Whatever needs to be brought to the table needs to be brought to the table when we're here together and needs to be discussed together. And the little sidelines, meetings behind the doors and everything else need to be stopped. And uh, because I can tell you, there's not a single person on the Board of Education that's not in it for the children to say. And the children first. But when we've got politics getting involved in things like that behind the scenes, um, the children are the ones that are going to suffer in the long run. Madam Facilitator, I, I feel like I do have to interject myself. I'm, I'm, talking, about, I'm talking about Senate Bill. I'm yeah. not talking about House. I'm yeah. talking about Senate But I still, the, the implications, uh, I don't know how Wayne County got put on that bill, but the first time I saw it, I said I would not support it. Uh, I would not, I didn't support it for Wake County. So I don't know how Wayne County got put on this on the Senate bill if it was a mistake or not. But if it would have come to my, if it would have come to the House, I oppose it in Wayne County, Dupin County, Wake County, Cabarrus County, Mecklenburg County. There is no need to mess around. There's enough contention between the two boards across this state without going to that area. So your representative for Wayne County from District Four vehemently opposed any proposal to give the county commissioners uh, uh, the authority for school construction. Okay, we're going to get, get back on the topic of better co communication, but you've been had your okay. hand up for a while. So, 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 so we're not going to have to say what I was going to say. He had his hand up next, and then I'll come back to I, you. I won't prove saying what I was saying for right. he, he stood up. up. <laughs> Can you wait your turn? Can I wait my turn? I, I was having my turn when I was interrupted. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Then the next step after that process, we turn around and see a county commissioner meeting where they've got their own plan. And they brought up their own plan and they're promoting it in the Grantham area. Um, that was wrong. Even one of the county commissioners at that meeting stated, this is not the way that we should be handling it. We should be having dialogue with the, with the uh, school board. My only hope that in the future, if, any, if you guys come up with your own plan, that before you go to voting on something in your meetings, that you would share it with us. We'll be glad to go take a look at that school. We'll be glad for you to go take a look at the schools that we've come up with in this plan that we've worked on for 10 years. And we'll be glad to talk about our differences and why we feel like it needs to be done the way it needs to be done. And then if we can come to some kind of consensus, that's fine. But don't expect us to come into a meeting like this feeling like that we're not backed into a corner already because your lack of communication 
your lack of communication with us before we move forward on an issue. It's not hurting me. It's hurting the kids in this county. It's hurting the citizens of this county. Uh, put it out here on the table. Let's let's go with it. But um, but no more of what we're doing on the past. It's wrong. It's allowing politics to get involved in something. It's allowing personal politics to get involved in issues. And that is wrong. That's not why anybody in this room is sitting at this table. That's not what the people in this county elected us to do. And it needs to stop. Now so, okay. <laughs> so let me ask you for a clarification for something to put up here in terms of suggested practice to make things move better in the future. Uh, and what I thought I was hearing was discuss your school issues together instead of separately. <coughs> Should that go up? Uh, at one particular time, we had uh, three board members from each, each group getting together from time to time and discussing things. I'm not opposed to us having that kind of dialogue if it needs to be a smaller group of people. But what I, well, what I am opposed to is the lack of communication. And the lack of communication does not need, if, if we were to go back to a system like that, then uh, all of the county commissioners need to know what's going on. And all of the school board members need to know what's going on. And I know that in the past, the reason we stopped is because the school board was being informed, you know, when they would meet, but uh, it was county commissioners all along. So, in other communities with parallel kinds of um, tensions around issues, sometimes they have decided to have sort of subcommittees like you described, three from this board, three from that board, meet regularly, have lunch, talk over stuff. Um, in other communities, it's been, we they've agreed to meet together more frequently um, for a period of time. So, I'm putting that out there, you don't have to decide now, but that challenge comes up other places. Well, as, as county commissioner, this is this is where uh, this is where the issue is. There's been conclusions drawn before. You have no idea if I knew about this going going, going on the bill. I did not. None of us knew until after the fact. Am I responsible for what goes on in the legislature? No. We made it clear. We made it clear that we did not know that we were not supported. And we didn't. We did not. So the key is, is that you can jump to conclusions. Let me let me go back and tell you what our preconditions are and what we came in here with. The previous boards of this county have said, and some of them have told me, that we're not going to give the Board of Education another dime because they're not using it properly. Okay, now, this has come from previous boards, okay? Now you talk you talk about having an opinion before you come in here. Now the other thing is is that what we did on, on putting these designs forward, okay, we made it clear that this was a suggestion. Did we all not say it from the commission board that these are just suggestions to the Board of Education? We do have that right if we want to fund it. We have that right to make suggestions. These suggestions that Jim Hyatt just put on today. Our suggestions. Nobody is saying that that's our plan. Somebody need to take the initiative, and Jimmy had all the information from 2008 and 9. Why not let him do it? So these are suggestions to the Board of Education. I want to sit down and get this thing done as bad as anybody. But we cannot, we cannot make predeterminations based on what we're reading newspapers. You can make all the trips you want to to the legislature in Raleigh, but unless you talk to me as a commissioner, you're not going to know how I feel and what the true story is. So that's the problem here. Hold on to the speaker. Yeah, but you, know, you don't need a predetermination to know what the word slack means. You all are still skirting around the issue now knowing where it's coming from because you're listening to previous commissioners that say that the Board of Education, that system, is, this Wayne County Public School System is in good shape. There have been a whole lot of in your windows and a lot of things put in the paper from the right. Board of Commission, right. such as why did our superintendent retire and come back? That's none of this commissioner's business. Well, First of all, let, well, you, you're saying preconceived notion. Let's deal with them. Yeah. And, and the fact that our superintendent uh, resigned 
and then rescinded his resignation has nothing to do with the commissioners. That's and he had a right to do that because we did not act on his resignation. That's right. Nobody sat out and asked us that. That's right. But you made us look like we were in there. How did they let that happen? We let it happen because we got the best superintendent who knows this system. We don't have a novice who don't what, understand what the intricacies what we, are. What we need to remember, though, is that what's good for the goose is good for the gander. He just sat there and did the same thing to, the, to me as a commissioner. Did he not? Yes, but you okay. didn't like, you never defined what slack me. Now you're telling I, us what basically made, on what somebody else said. Make the statement, sir. You did. You made a statement that we have been not I using our funds right. That statement, sir. You just made the I, statement. I said the previous board yeah, member. But said I that. said you made the statement. I didn't ask you the origin you of it. No, no. Ah, you the statement you made was you that we were not it, using our money. You can twist it any way you want to. But the fact is, is that's why we're not coming together. It's because we're not coming we're together because you, you all have already had your meetings. We we have the right to have. And we have money. a right to get money that is earmarked for the school board. We, so why should we have to beg you to give us part of that thirteen million that belongs to us? We're not. But we're going to do it responsibly. Yeah, you're going to do it responsibly. You might have to go to the legal system to do it too, because we know our rights too. Okay, let's take a look. We digress. <laughs> Ain't no digression. Yeah, we, everybody has got to make a concerted effort to to have better communication. And what is Mr. Bridgen is talking about about the bill, I don't know, Mr. Mayo, whether you or anybody on the commission has said anything about the bill. Although I do know that I, when we got an uh, email from the school board, state school board, it said that Wayne County was one of 12 counties that had been added to that bill. There's only 12, it, had, it was going to be a statewide, but then it was going to change to all, only the counties that wanted it. We were told that Wayne County, by the way, is one of the 12 that wanted us. So I personally called Mr. Payton, our representative, Louis Payton, and told him that the board, the, uh, that's why we were on the list. He said, well, I was told that the county commissioners were on the city of And this isn't hearsay, this is a direct conversation. He said, I was told that the county commissioners were 100% in favor of I said, well, the school board gave you a, reson a resolution saying that we were unanimously opposed to it. And at the time, he said he found it later, but he said he didn't have that letter yet. But anyway, somebody is putting out false information. I don't know who it is. I don't know what commissioner it came from. It came from one board from one. Well, I don't know if Mr. Payton that put out. I do know what I heard. And somebody, I do know that we've had several of our school board members meet with a couple of the county commissioners and make little agreements or plans on the side and the rest of either board isn't, isn't aware of it. That doesn't help anything out. Because the rest of the board is not committed to those conversations. They're not even aware of them. And we've been we've done this so many times over the years that two or three board members and two or three commissioners will get together and make their little side plan. And nobody else with either board is on he's either in tune with it we're in agreement with it. We've got to stop those kind of sidebars and have communication so that all both boards know what's going on with both boards. Amen. I can answer this question since I'm the target. No, I'm not saying you're the target. I'm just saying that I, I was I'm just, I've, I've, uh, I can answer the question if you allow me. Uh, <clears throat> North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Let me back up just one minute. I've been here since 08, and I've been to a previous board that made a lot of comments to the Board of Education about the Board of Education what we were going to do what we want. I was in the minority at that time. I was only one of two conservatives. I was seven. But there was a lot of things that Mr. Bale said mm -hmm. that made a lot of sense. And one I'm just recently about schools, the vacancy rate, population rate, growth rate. And I started to listen to that eight months ago before the new board took over. The North Carolina Association of County Commissioners met in Raleigh, and nine people got up, and they spoke from nine different counties, and seven of them were Tier 1 counties, that their school systems could not afford to, to have the buildings and the curriculum at the same time. So the association voted that day, and I, vote, I was a delegate from Wayne County, and I voted that there would be an option, the word option, for counties to own the schools 
if the Board of Education wanted the counties to own the buildings and keep the buildings up so they could concentrate on curriculum because they didn't have the money in their counties. So the association, by two-thirds vote, voted that day to make it part of the goals that the association would. And that's all I had to do with voting that day. I got a phone call from the local news Argus that wanted me to comment on that. I had no comment, really, because it wasn't an issue. Because I was, a, I was led to believe through the conversation of the reporter that it would become an issue. And it wasn't two hours later I got a phone call from Mr. Grantham wanting me to comment on it. Because he had spoken to the paper. And I told Mr. Grantham I have no comment because I had not talked to the commissioners about it. And we are open, we are transparent, and we are going to talk about everything openly. Fast forward six weeks, Senator Pate, I called him and wanted to know why Wayne County was on the list. He said, Mr. King, I put it on there. I questioned him, and I'm glad it's recorded. Senator Pate, why would you do that? Without, without uh, talking to the chairman or any commissioner, his response was, I thought it would help the school system situation in Wayne County. He said, I apologize for putting it on there, Mr. King, and not going to you. I said, well, thank you. Now, fast forward that probably a day or two, I think Mr. Grant and Mr. Bridgen went up to Mr. Pate and had it removed. Now, it does set precedents in the minds of a lot of people. It sets precedents for the state. And I assume that's why the House members voted it down. The Senate voted for it. But, with the economy like it is, the Association of County Commissioners voted that day that it would be an option for counties to absorb the expense of the school buildings, bricks and mortar, so the schools could concentrate on the curriculum of the children and let the county government, the taxpayers, pay for the buildings. That was it in a nutshell. And these commissioners were at the association meeting. We got no pushback from any of them. There was certainly pushback from other counties in the state. But for Mr. Pridgen to sit here and assume, because Mr. Pridgen and I have not had a conversation by phone, by email, at all. So just to make it perfectly clear that this chairman is transparent and truthful and going to tell everybody exactly what's happened as I'm the commissioner. And that's the way it went down. Thank you. So moving forward, how are y'all going to practice transparency between these two boards in order to improve your success? Uh, I think, Mr. Bridget, so I really say I don't think there could be any more clarity in what we desire to go forward than to be absolutely open and honest with each other. And all the information that you need to get to us ahead of time, uh, Mr. Smith, please do. But we stand on the fact that when we discuss these items, we discuss them together. And they won't give any room, Mr. West, for somebody to say, so and so said this, admit that, except for getting us information that we can read, and I hope individuals, because all of us can probably read individuals, save your opinions and so forth until we get to the meeting together. And then I think we will have that absolute transparency that we want. Any other ideas about practicing transparency and assuming the best intentions of each other as well? What I'm putting is receive information, wait until the meeting together to discuss it. Any other ideas? I, I want to um, have just a little bit more discussion in regards to the Board of Education taking our money and working on our current projects. And the county manager made a statement that he was going to use that money to leverage further borrowing. Um, yeah. I have a hard time grasping the concept how he's going to use Board of Education money to leverage BART on maybe some much broader span than what the Board of Education is even asking for, things like county projects. Um, does he need that money for cash flow? Because that money is sitting in, in your account, but it's designated funds for us. and. I'm just sorry, $400,000 for the air conditioned M2 gym. I cannot see how, in the big scheme of things, that that would affect y'all. So, I mean, I want our Board of Education to move forward. And 
so, so I mean, I want to be completely transparent about it, but I want you to be completely transparent about it, too. Are you using Board of Education designated funds to leverage borrowed money to build a shell building? Okay. You can't use the county, the school dollars to leverage anything from county well, borrowed. I mean, I mean, I mean, so, so why? It's only leveraging dollars for school construction. Yeah, so why? That's it. Why would these small amounts, by these small projects, I mean, how can that in the big scheme of things make any real difference? Mm, I didn't say it did. Uh, what I said was, is I would just, my only, and I said this was just for me, from Davenport yesterday, because we, we said we were meeting today, and I said, what about these dollars that are sitting there to fund this fund balance and the sales tax and the others? They said, as you're having these discussions, we caution on both sides, the county using its own fund balance right now, and the school board. However, and we've even said this yesterday, and, and you as a board, I said to, to, to Ms. Delma a moment ago, you as a school board have to decide what's important. And there are things you have to do. And I think the office, our board, the county understands that. You know, so, I mean, it's, it's totally your call. But we obviously, and all counties in the state, when they borrow monies for schools, utilize those funds. They utilize those funds. He's just sharing all relevant information in terms of it may not seem like a big pot of money. It seems like a very compelling need to meet for your school children, and it might have an impact that you, he cannot anticipate. Your comment, and then we'll begin to sum up. Well, I, I didn't want to rush you or anything, but we're so running out of time, and I was hoping that we could, while everybody's here and don't have your calendar full yet, we could come up with an actual date to discuss it. The, the commissioners are getting together with all of the municipalities in the county for the month of September, and it may move into the 1st of October. I would recommend somewhere in the middle of October to come back together because it'll give the commissioners an opportunity to speak to all the municipalities. There are seven municipalities in the county. Mount Olive, Goldsboro, Fremont, Pikeville, Southern Springs, Eureka. And who, Everybody good? We're doing what we did today. Um, in the interest of um, becoming a self-learning organization here, in, in the sense that the two boards together are another organization uh, with a lot of very important responsibilities, let's take a moment just to evaluate what went well today and what you want, might want to change for the next time, given that the next time is October 8th. So, uh, anything goes. Uh, it can be the facility, where you met, the food, how we structured things, how you sat, anything goes. What went well today and enabled some productive outcomes of any kind, and what would you want to change or strengthen for the next time? Yes, sir. Uh, I had a little humor. I think I had the biggest outcome of anybody here. I had four of my fellow commissioners to agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> get it all out so that hopefully we can have better communication and in the future have a better relationship. So I, I thought it was a good meeting. I, I, I do want to 
extend an apology to the school board if there was any bad feeling, and hopefully we have settled that and we can move possibly in the future. Uh, the only comment I've got is uh, I want to address the school board and the county board. Uh, we were all elected to do a job. The bottom line is that our children are friendly. Uh, we were not elected as district commissioners. School board and county board. We were elect elected as school board members and county board members. We represent the whole county. Yes. And that's, I just want everyone to keep that in mind. So we're all at. here, we're all here for the good of the children and the county. And I'd like to add on to that. Uh, is that sentiment? That, um, we've been sending in people out of Grantham a tax bill for the last 20 years and they needed a school. It's time for us to do something like that. We've been sending them a property tax bill for 20 years and, um, and, and um, Danny Sowell out there can vote for me. So, okay. I think we had a lot of constructive criticism today, and that's the way I look at it. Constructive. Uh, we we, we to leave here uh, uh, loving what we do, loving each other. And let's move forward. Forget about anything negative or separate because it was constructive criticism. We have a, we have a, in our business, we have a motto is that we cannot solve an issue if it's never put on the table. People can keep thinking about things when all of a sudden it just explodes. So I think mean, what we did do, we released a lot of our, our feelings that we thought were right, and we found out in some cases that. Our feelings weren't right, but uh, moving forward, let's just come together and, and do what's right for our children. I yield to my senior. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to borderline with the good and the bad. Uh, I think what we've got to establish between the two boys is a fair amount of trust. Uh, we have, uh, over the years, uh, People always try to establish some type of, uh, of uh, bad feeling between the board, and I don't think we're going to do there to begin with. I hope today that what we have done is shown the board commissioners that, that we're not unsure, that we're certain about what we're going to do, that we're not slack, that we are certainly not neglecting our duties, and that we're willing to work. And uh, to be honest with all of us, to be unbalanced. If I be any given elected officials, I feel like that uh, uh, we have shown uh, that, that our hearts are in the right place today. And I hope when we meet next time that it's, a, it's a more of a unity type thing than, than it is a separate force that we're coming together with 14 people that are elected by the county and that we can come up with some, uh, some uh, problem solving things like right Um, I want to add to that that I think a positive for me is that I had an opportunity to express myself and be heard. Um, and I got worried when I looked at the agenda and you asked about the name and how long because I understand the, the rationale behind it, but I think we all have something to bring to the table. No matter how long we've served, there are some who've been up here a long time. I mean, this is no question that you may not be in tune. There are things changing. This is a whole new school system. There are some things coming down from state that were not present a long time ago. And commissioners, I do have a high respect for what you do, and I do not want your job. I really don't. You do have a burden. I understand that. But I really go back to the analogy that I used when we first met. I really wish we could be family. And if family can't express themselves, disagree, agree to disagree, and I don't know what family is. And I don't have a, I mean, I'm, again, I'm born ugly. I don't have a mad bone in my body. I, I guess every time I speak, I think I'm preaching. And in my church, if you preach pretty, they go to sleep. So you have to, so you have to be mighty ugly. So, but I don't want to be disrespectful. That's not my intent. So I, 
want to make that clear. It really, it's not my intent. I respect everybody. I respect the constituency of Wayne County for choosing you in your respective role. But all I'm asking is that you please, let's don't result to childish name calling. And I'm not trying to throw a question out. That's already out. But I really wish we could be men and women that would be respectful for each other so that the district, excuse me, the county will respect us. And, and that's what I'm saying. Just want all the commissioners and the school board members to remember, we may appear to get mad and angry right. at times, but it's not that. We just have intense fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> intense fellowship. I'm going to remember that. Intense fellowship. I'm going to bring with you again, Joe. <laughs> Let me say, I'm going to say one thing. Uh, there was a comment made while ago about the two boards or respective members talking not in an open session or not in a, in a board meeting or whatever. I, I just want to say this. I've been on the board two and a half years and I've heard from several different people about being able to, to trust the current commission board based on something that boards previous to them did. I mean, that's not fair to these guys. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't look at it as a negative um, for me to be able to pick the phone up and talk to C. King or talk to John Bell or talk to Mr. Cromarty or talk to whoever. I, 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 you know, I'm not going to be, I guess I'm not going to be instructed or whatever. I, I think that is vital to the two boards working together because you can't tell me that everything that's ever accomplished or everything that's ever agreed upon is, is done in an open session. You know, you've got to have some input and you've got to have some call it whatever you want to call it, but you got to have dialect for people outside of a, of a, of a structure. And, and I think that goes a long way. And I, and I think that we, myself, I can't speak for the rest of the Board of Education, but I, you know, I, I'm not, just because a, a prior board wasn't trusted or whatever, or promised this and didn't do this or told them they were going to do this, and that's what we've always heard from that. that, that I've got nothing to do with that. I wasn't on the board, and that's not fair to the current board. I, I'm, I'm I'm basing my trust on what they tell me, or what we do together, or what what we get accomplished. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just think that's important for us to talk. Talk to each other in the rooms today, not who was in the seat. That's right. Yeah, I'm just going to talk. I'm Chris Moore. He was a board member of our Rancher Board Commissioners, and um, I'm still going to mention him. I'm still going to talk to him. That's right. And all night, and he's wiping the mouth out of the right hand. So, yeah, well, we're just hoping we don't make decisions before we come to the board. Yeah. Talking, you, you can't do this job without talking. There's no way without talking. Right, right. exactly right. right. What y'all did it up here? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. So talking's okay. It builds relationships. Making decisions ahead of time, not okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Any other ideas about what will in, uh, enhance your success? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. I'd like to add that our... Uh, you have to be, some of us were friends before we ever got on the board now. I'm not going to stop being your friend because I'm on one board and you on the other. John Bell is my neighbor. Oh, I walked around in the same district. They can't talk to you, John. You are the commissioners. But May still, that's my pastor over there. He is really full of energy. Now you think you heard something today. You should come to St. James A.M.E. Zion Church on Sunday morning. You will really get a sermon, and I enjoy it so much. But I do. I enjoy all of you. i tell you what, I enjoy all of you. I don't have a selfish bone in my body. I don't have sense enough. In fact, I'm too old anyway. And uh, I might say some things now that maybe some of it might say it's curt. But they tell me after you get a certain age, and if you got grandparents, you know this for a fact. We say whatever well, comes up in our <laughs> <laughs> Don't care for earth for not. We just grandparents. And we have this privilege because we've been here long enough to say what we feel of it. Thank you. Most <laughs> people bring you still truth. Yeah. I agree with that. Obviously, just from talking to you, what we were talking about is don't have be making deals on the side. On the side. I mean, you know, just stop. And I talk to those people on the board too. One of the things that uh, 
I think it came out good and so started. Everybody got a chance to put the field out there, so now I'm ready to go behind you and you set your feet and move on and just remember like one out of every three people have got a mental problem, so take a look to your right and left. So it's a, it's not a, you know, I, I can appreciate what the county commissioners do because you actually have a lot more issues that, and you're being fooled a lot more different ways than we are. But we don't have any control over the ways you're fooled, we're just trying to fool you our way. <laughs> you are advocates for education. That is your job. This may not be the time or place for this, but I think there's been a couple or maybe three or four commissioners who have expressed some interest in going down to the current Grantham School Building and touring the facility. I mean, since we're all here in the same room together, if we can establish maybe a date and timeline for us to get in and walk through and see so we will be informed about what we're talking about and see the actual building and the, and the condition that the majority of the building is in so that we can do that in mind and make a decision. Okay. How about we uh, close stuff out and then, and while you're still in the room, make that, those plans? What was your comment? Well, I would uh, like to say, that, and I saw the direct this towards the uh, new media. I would like for you to, as an investigative group, so I look back at every issue that you heard today and maybe look back through history and see what would be the outcome of those. I will try to mention that they did not put any one speaker on the, on the uh, spotlight, but I heard a couple of two or three different items come up in the latter part of the meeting that really has implications for our funding what we do. Uh, this morning I said that uh, the person who uh, was the greatest interest to me in the county was the young teacher that I had not met. Talking about talking sort of to individuals, and I'm not going to call their name, but I broached a couple of I broached a subject with a couple of the board members that I let them know that I had certain interests about a certain item that has to do with teachers. I will personally be watching the board meetings to see if any of those kinds of things come up. Uh, we talk about the buildings and the children. I have a specific interest about teachers. And I want to give this as a parent. Raleigh decided that they would not do anything monetarily for the teachers. They took the tenure away. Uh, they gave you some holidays, but I can't quite see how that transfers into money because you can take the time off and you'll go spend some money that you might have in your pocket. <laughs> I don't like to see teachers mistreated. And, and I don't like to see teachers work for nothing. There are times when teachers work for nothing. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to meddle in the school business. business. i just leave it at that. But this has been a very productive day I applaud you for the honesty that came right. forth today. Right. Because once we're honest with each other, everything else takes care of itself. I'm, I'm going to have to say this. I've been the previous board referred to about three or four times since I've been here. And this information that I'm hearing, I don't know anything about it. I've been on the board almost 13 years. I have never heard a county commission say they're not going to do anything with school people or the school system. So I want someone to tell me, where are you getting this information from? That's a, that's a conversation. Because I have worked all have. to make sure that schools are funded. And if you go back and check the minutes of all the meetings that we've had, then you will see where my hand went up on every issue pertaining to the school. And I, I don't know where it is. And Ms. Smith will tell you, she, she and I talked constantly over the years about funding things for the school, about doing good things for the school system. And I keep hearing this statement. You would think that the previous board was just a bunch of nitwits that didn't do nothing right. And because somebody tried to pretend that the school the previous board and the school board was almost about to kill each other. I've heard that over the past six months. And I don't know where this stuff is coming from. And it's unfair to all the good people that have served this camp so well and have worked with the school board. I can name project after project after project that we have done for the Wayne County Board of Education School System. Uh, 
this on the last one. But I, I think that, uh, well, I think everybody's starting this in my last time speaking. But I, I want to uh, say that today has been a, a very um, productive day in the life of Wayne County and the citizens and the children. And the projects that were brought today needed to be brought publicly without the twist or bend of newspaper. This is live. It is on the air. It's been filmed. So I go back to the word slack. And the word slack was in conversation with a reporter who used the word to sell a newspaper. Okay? So that word became a part of the problem and not part of the solution. Okay? Now, I've been in business in Goldsboro for 28 years and I've employed thousands of high school kids and, much, and nearly all of them Wayne County kids. Thousands. And I have a rapport with the children because my business was car wash business, as you all know. But taking this adversarial approach, if someone would call it that, I see it as an opportunity. I use adversity as an opportunity. And today is a great opportunity for this county and the leaders of this county, which is sitting at this table. That's, that's who we are. At the end of the day, no matter what's been said or what bill's been passed or what bill has, and at the end of the day, there's 122,000 people in this county that are looking for us to leave. Them. That's just plain and simple. They pay their money in, they pay their taxes in, and they look for us as leaders. And if it takes an apology for me, absolutely. I humble myself at this very moment. And I apologize. But as a businessman, I like to see things happen, and I like to see them happen right now. And I've been here since 08, and I spend 50 to 60 hours of my time since 08 working for this county. Some might say it's micromanaging. God's just given me the ability to do that. Now, with that said, what I like to do is continue working at that rate for another three and a half years. And with that said, I've got, as chairman this year, seven commissioners that are on this journey together. And our priority when we took office in January was to get right out front, Mr. Bell, and what he has heard, and he said, let's get right out front on education. Now, I, have, I came before you as chairman wanting a plan, and you gave me a plan. But the county manager, his job is to serve at our pleasure, and he has to have numbers for the budget. So, yes, I made some recommendations that, that, that he go ahead with the process and the protocol to get that and forth, to get the numbers together for our budget. And of course, the Board of Education, you don't have to have those figures before. Now, in that process, I admit there was a, there was a breakdown. Because as I was waiting for phone calls for the likes of Mr. Pritchett, where I had spent hours and hours and hours and hours since 08 on the phone with Mr. Pritchett. And somehow that relationship got severed. I spent hours on the phone with Mr. Radford. Somehow that got severed. I spent hours on the phone with Chris West, Mr. West. Now, point is, is that maybe I wasn't humble enough to pick up the phone and call and wonder why. Maybe I missed it. But today, uh, it has come to my attention in my heart that maybe I need to do better. Maybe I need to pick up the phone and call and ask questions and not wait for the phone. So I agree with communication as our number one priority moving forward is that we move forward to think that we all have skin in the game. We're all on the ship together. We just got to get to our destination safely. And that's what I'd like to leave with today and, and let you know that I appreciate everyone that works on the Board of Education. I appreciate all the teachers and the principals. And superintendent. And the leaders. I just appreciate all the work that they do. 
but it, it's it's uh, it's time now that we stop leaning on the past and start working for the future. And I think this is the right time. This day did not happen by accident. We are not sitting here, even to the youngest on the wall. He is not here by accident today. This is not 